Hi, okay, today what I'd like to do is go over color, pigments, color mixing. And we're gonna do some exercises in a moment, but I wanna explain some things. I made this color wheel. This is watercolor. And um, one of the things that I first wanna mention is that these are pigments. They're made, man-made pigments. And either they're man-made or they're, they come from organic pigments but um, from the earth. But however, they're representations of spectral hues. So when you mix them, like for example, if you wanna make an orange and you mix yellow and red, theoretically, you're gonna get a nice orange, but you don't always get the orange that you desire. Uh, same thing, yellow, blue, you know, you might wanna get a nice green like you see on the color wheel, but then it'll come out as an earthy green. So I'm gonna explain why that happens. Oftentimes, um, let me just show you something. Okay. When we're mixing colors, and this is what I'm gonna have you be have you doing, uh, colors tend to be, the colors that I gave you on the list, well, there's yellow. I didn't put in two yellows. I just put in kind of a neutral yellow. But um, I have a warm red, which is the cadmium red light, and I have a cool red, which is the alizarin crimson. And then when you mix the two of them, you get this red. Now, this is the way it is with some of these colors, is that sometimes different versions of colors like alizarin crimson, for example, would be moving a little bit toward violet. So it's a cool red. Or in the case of cadmium red light, it's moving a little bit toward orange. So it's a warmer red. So this comes up later when you're trying to mix a red and a blue, for example, to get violet. You don't always get the violet you want, but we'll get there in a minute. Um, okay, so what I did was I took all the colors that we have, especially the hues, because there's some other colors on your list that are not hues, like the, um, like the brown and the paints gray, but we're focusing on hues. And so I made mm, six rows, and you can do this on your inexpensive paper, I just, you don't need to use your arches for this. So I made six rows. I just, you know, kind of measured off two inches and made a straight line just to keep things in order. And uh, like I said, I mixed the two reds to get a third red. I mixed the two blues to get a blue in the middle of those. And then I put out, I put down a swatch of, cadmi of yellow, cadmium red light. When I tried to mix the secondary color, the orange, I tried to get as close to the middle of those two colors as I possibly could. And you would theoretically think that you add 50% yellow and 50% red, but that's not always the case because sometimes colors are more concentrated. Uh, they might be dye-based and they're very concentrated. So it maybe it'll take a little bit of red and the yellow to get your desired orange. And then I mix the colors in between those to get yellow orange red, orange, did that down the line. Alizarin crimson, yellow. Um, cerulean blue, yellow. And you're just gonna see the difference. Like you can see in this row, how different these greens are by mixing the same yellow and the two different blues. Um, now, here's a, here's a row of um, ultramarine blue and cadmium red light, and you can see that the color in the middle, even though you think you mix red and blue and you're gonna get violet, it's kind of a muddy brownish violet. And the reason for that is because, uh, it's simple, the color, the red, well, the cadmium red light is, is a little bit of a warmer red, and the ultramarine blue is a little bit of a warmer blue. And so when you mix the two of them, you know, you're almost getting other colors mixed in and you get this kind of almost a more neutral violet. Uh, here, you can see, you can see what happens when I mix the cerulean blue and the cadmium red. This is the violet I got. And of course you can go out and buy violet. You can get some beautiful violet paint. Um, 
you can get rose matter or a rose color, which actually makes fantastic violets when they're mixed with blue, something like this, um, bright rose or, or um, rose matter. And, uh, you know, that's fine. You can get purple, you can get bright orange. If you're working on a painting, let's say, and you have a lot of really vivid purples, you might wanna go out and buy purple. Anyway, but I was trying to keep the cost down, so I just wanted to show you the possibilities with these paints. And then um, I mixed the Viridian and the yellow to get this green. And then I mixed a couple of complementary sets like orange and blue. And what happens when you mix complements is that you get a chromatic neutral, what's called a chromatic neutral. In subtractive color mixing, which is color mixing with pigments, what happens is when you mix a secondary color and the color opposite, which is a primary color, it's actually mixing all three colors because it's yellow and red that makes the orange and the blue. So you're mixing red, yellow, and blue. And when you mix all those colors together, they kind of cancel out each other and you get a chromatic neutral. So anyway, um, it's, it's an interesting experiment. I didn't have you make a color wheel. I didn't think it was that important, but um, here's an example of, oh, here's an example of mixing blacks also. You know, you have your paints gray, and if you use that in a really concentrated form, it's gonna come out as black, or if you add water to it, it's gonna come out as gray, but you can also get a nice black by mixing ultramarine blue and the burnt umber, or mixing alizarin and, um, missing alizarin and the phthalo green or viridian. And then I created a little bit of a warmer black and a cooler black by, you know, having a move a little bit more toward the red or toward the green. So I just want to show you how I did this. And um, some of you asked me how to clean up the palette. So I use, this is kind of messy. I use toilet tissue because it's really easy and I just dip it in some water, and then I can clean up my wells that way. It wipes up pretty nicely. Um, and so, anyway, I just found that's the easiest way to clean my wells, because this is gonna require a lot of different color mixing, and you really wanna keep your colors clean, you know, especially the colors in here. You don't want to be mixing your blues into your yellows because then you'll have to clean out the whole well. So that's just part of watercolor. But um, I'll show you what I did is, okay, let's see. Anyway, I'm just going to do a row really quickly here. Okay, I'm just going to do a row. Let's say... You know, I'm gonna jump around a little bit, but let's say I'm gonna use like a yellow. And one of the things you wanna do when you get the paint, when you put the paint onto your tray, here, I'm gonna add a little more yellow here. Yellow runs out quickly, or mine does anyway, is you don't wanna paint directly, dip it in here and directly paint it onto your paper. You wanna put it on the tray and then really mix it up to get the desired value of that color. So the more and intensity. So the more color that you mix in the less water, the more intense it will be. So you want to go for, you know, kind of an intensity where you're getting a transparency, but it's not, um, you know, super pale. And then you can add some water like this to the bottom of it, just to see the value difference, because that's how value, light and dark, is created with watercolor. And then I'm gonna clean my brush really well, and then I'm gonna try some, here, I'll try some ultramarine blue. And you can see that um, I'm putting the blue here, and I'm not mixing the two together yet, but um, sometimes it helps to twirl the brush like this. You guys can see that this way. You know, you just want a consistent, you don't want streaks in your color is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then see what kind of green I can make from these two colors. 
I'm just going to combine them. And if the green doesn't look green enough and it moves towards, you know, towards yellow or towards blue, I'll add more of the um, opposite, the other color in it. So I think that green looks okay. When you mix yellow and ultramarine blue, you get an earthy green. There's so many ways to make green, but you don't get that bright, vivid green that's on your color wheel. However, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today. So we can do these color charts, and I just want to make a remark about um, exercises like this and exercises like the bands of color and the brushwork that we did last week. I'm going to count that towards participation. So it'll be in the assignments tab on your mod on your um, course on your Canvas, and. Um, I will post it as an assignment. You can just take a picture of it and submit it. And then the finished paintings will put in discussions. This way we can all see each other's work and we can kind of have little mini critiques on the work. And um, it's a nice way of sharing. So that's it for now. Okay.